Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space and let's get right into it today. So this is going to be a price prediction and we also have some recognizable names here from the actual Ripple, the company. So about the authors again, this was dated back a while back in 2018 by Robert Michnik. Again, he is now the lead for blockchain for BlackRock, one of the biggest asset management groups in the world, six to seven trillion dollars under assets. I know the news, of course, that we shared in the previous video regarding the Federal Reserve connection. Um, and of course, he was formerly at Ripple as well in leading the blockchain initiative for BlackRock as we are going towards a more digital or electronic economy, embracing distributed ledger technology. Next, we have Susan Athey. I, I believe it's Athey or Athey. I'm just going to say Athey for this video. Um, and again, a fundamental valuation framework for crypto assets. Now, stick with me here. We've shared this before on the channel, but I wanted to reshare this and include some additional information with Swift, Swift GPI, R3, Ripple, and where XRP ties into all of this. So, really quick. So, Susan, Susan Athey, guys, just to understand her background, and this is not a price prediction from me. This is from them, granted, if they do cross-border dominance. So, I know that, you know... They give a price range, and of course, we have other people that give, you know, triple and, you know, four digits as well, but let's just see what this encompasses. So right here, Susan Athey is the economics of technology professor at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, also serves on the board of directors of Ripple Labs and Coin Center, as well as several other tech companies. We can see her research and teaching focus on platforms and marketplaces, machine learning, AI, and financial technology and cryptocurrency. Received her PhD at Stanford and her bachelor's at Duke in economics, mathematics, and computer science. As we continue here, um, American economist under the age of 40 as well with the John Bates Clark Medal. And then VP of the American Economics Association. Next up, Rob or Robert Michnik. Now he is again lead blockchain of BlackRock. Let me just pull it up really quick. I know I've shared it in the previous video, but just to show you guys here. Okay, so BlackRock hires former Ripple exec. So again, if you guys want to read this, I mean, I just did a video on this BlackRock recently the other day. Okay. So again, right here, spent time with Ripple in the summer of 2017. Prior to Stanford, spent three years at CPP Investment Board and Public Market Investments and Principal Credit Investments. Graduated from Queens University. We got a BA in Economics as well. Medal of Commerce. Anyways, and stands in the top 1% of the Stanford GSB class of 2018. All right, now here's the disclosure. FYI, do your own research, not financial advice. But as Ripple Labs, again, director of Ripple Labs, Susan Athey, holds an equity position in Ripple Labs, so it could be biased, keep that in mind, but she tries to you know, be as objective as possible, which in turn has a large position in the crypto asset XRP. And then right here, she also holds various crypto assets directly. So you can assume she holds some XRP. I think that's a safe assumption, especially as some Ripple employees, at least early on, maybe still now, um, are able to receive payment via XRP because they're building on the XRP ecosystem. It's open sourced, all of that. <clears throat> I need a drink of water, excuse me, before I hiccup into the microphone. All right, and again, all references to Ripple or XRP in this paper are based on only publicly available information. That could be a key. So now essentially, I'm just going to go to page 20 and we'll just see the valuations. So high estimates they see with XRP success rate for cross-border payments alone is $32. They see low estimates around, you know, $6. Now keep in mind, it's a do or die. And this estimate is based off of cross-border and, you know, part of cross-border payments. This is not including anything else we're working on in the XRP ecosystem. The $500 million spring initiative. We got, you know, gaming developers with Forte. We have music. We have... DeFi, we have streaming with coil.com. Um, you know, if we get into even the DeFi market or the derivatives market, um, or actually somehow R3 uses XRP and is actually plugged in right to Swift GPI, it's it's game over. But I just wanted to show you some conservative estimates as well. Okay. And you guys can feel free to read this as well. Um, again, I just recommend you just literally typing in the Google a fundamental valuation of crypto or framework for crypto assets, and you guys can just find this. All right, a PDF available from June 2018. All right, now, just after talking about Susan, let's listen to her here. So again, shared by Status, Ripple wants to move hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars between banks internationally. Remember, interbank, not intrabank like JPM coin. Again, Susan Athey, Board of Directors, Ripple, noted economist. Oh. 
when I first started talking about alternative cryptocurrencies in, say, 2013, and I was involved with Ripple very early, there was a whole set of people, including some of our famous tech leaders in Silicon Valley, who would stand up and say, you know, scale economies, you know, the, the best thing doesn't always win. Bitcoin was first. Bitcoin, 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 everything is going to be Bitcoin. These other things are all going to die. I would stand up and quietly raise my hand and say, well, you know, if you're thinking about enterprise software, it's not all just like the Betamax and VHS and, you know, Netscape versus IE. In fact, in enterprise software, you typically have a lot of different vertical solutions serving different parts of the market with different combinations of features. And so my thought was that we will see different systems for different purposes. And in fact, that is sort of how that's evolved. So I don't think there's one size fits all. So Ripple wants to move, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars or, or trillions of dollars between banks internationally. So they need a highly scalable system. So when I exactly. Highly scalable. Bitcoin will not solve the payments problem. Now, to tie it in with SWIFT, notice up top, hopefully you can see here, it says the global provider of secure financial messaging services. Now, I believe back in the day, it used to just say payment or settlement in some form of another. Notice how the narrative cha is changing. They're still focusing on sending, you know, whatever, 15 million messages a day for payments. And keep in mind, SWIFT GPI can, you know, fix this problem and basically make it more efficient, but it does not fix the pre-funded accounts. Just like XCurrent, they can compete, but it's not actually allowing all of this dormant capital to go back home and be used more efficiently to create additional revenue streams. Now to tie in SWIFT with all of this. Right here, Matthew, L-I-N-Y, I have an inside joke with him, I used to always call him Matthew Linney, and I will keep it going. So Matthew Linney, SWIFT forced, and again, SWIFT is the dominant market share of all of this cross-border with the correspondent banking network system. We're talking, you know, well over $5 trillion per day sent internationally right? It's a clunky architecture built pre-internet era. It is time to upgrade these systems. Even, you know, President Donald Trump has talked about the payments ecosystem saying, yeah, it's old. It's, what did he say, 40 years or 35, whatever, you know, he said. He said it's old. We're updating. We need to update and making things better. Now, of course, he was also talking about, you know, the medical and healthcare field and record keeping and things of that nature. And I'm not saying everything has to do with XRP. What I'm saying is it's validating a tech refresh for those of you that understand stand. All right. So right here, Swift is forced to entertain DLT. Now, earlier on, they talked about DLT more, but as people in XRP community got crazy, I feel like they've kind of leveled off a little bit. But anyways, distributed ledger technology, understanding the potential to transform the financial industry. We got an overview, progressing technology through industry initiatives. Next up, Swift's DLT proof of concept that they're running. Again, Hyperledger. We already know their connection. Next, the path to DLT adoption. We can see opportunities and DLT and financial services, key factors for success. And then why common standards matter. Remember, the word is interoperability. Find out how ISO 20022 can better enable DLT and API technologies of tomorrow. It's a single standard interface. They're all on the same messaging language. Complete interoperability. Standards matter. And that is what's going to happen in the payment space. Right now, there is a difference between payments and settlement. But in the future, we want to make that one single action. All right, Swift GPI and DLT, talking about the benefits now of GPI to DLT, making that, you know, it's it's a level up, but it's not fixing the true problem at hand. Then, of course, we can talk about reconciliation. I know R3 is doing a lot of that. But again, this is not settlement. We need to solve the settlement issue. And then again, Swift on distributed ledger technology. We're talking about Accenture. We know the connections with them, helping with digital transformation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then 22 additional global banks joining Swift GPI. I think GPI is absolutely massive. I think, personally, and you guys can say, you know, people disagree, that is fine. We're here to speculate on a speculative investment. But I do believe that Swift GPI will plug in to R3 in the future, and XRP will be used as the settlement mechanism. R3 is already named that XRP is one of the only digital assets named to be used as settlement. All right. So I think there's a lot more groups. And then again, has potential for global liquidity optimization. The higher the liquidity, the tighter the spreads, the more efficient this can happen. All right. And in a future video, I'm actually going to talk about XRP being classified, um, not as a security, but some form of commodity or digital exchange token as well. And I want to go into depth about that. All right, so right here, I am Legion. So Digital Asset Investor actually did share a video today. I still wanted to kind of go over this because it is relevant, but basically, Shared by Am Legion, in case you thought Swift is not moving to the fourth industrial revolution with the rest of us back from 2016 on the website. So I guess it still says secure financial messaging services. Um, so no change there. But as we see here, 
April 20th, 2016, Swift and Accenture outline path to DLT adoption within financial services. Now, we know Accenture's connection to not only, of course, R3, but also Ripple doing the same type of thing with DLT. We can see, you know, even on Hyperledger, we know Swift is involved. No surprise, of course, they want to fix cross-border payments. That's one of the most immediate and obvious pain points that cryptocurrency, specifically digital assets or crypto assets, can solve. All right functionality, tailored access to data and other privileges, proof of concepts, and then of course Swift's GPI. Again, this is the Global Payments Innovation Initiative. All right, next up, we can see Swift in R3 now. Same concept, Swift to bring benefits of GPI to DLT and trade ecosystems. Initial proof of concept with blockchain enterprise firm R3. And yes, there's a huge lawsuit with R3 and Ripple. It's my belief they still own a significant amount of XRP. Um, it's, you know, the writing is on the wall for anybody that's done their research. So please, please, please just go ahead and look up, type in, you know, R3 Corda, C-O-R-D-A in XRP or Ripple, and kind of just look at some of the pictures in the past as well. We can see Swift, R3, Ripple, Deutsche Bank, another too big to fail. We got, um, I forget how to, Mizu, I forget how to pronounce that bank. But again, we've seen them. We got UBS again, Bank of England, all RippleNet partners, Earthport, CLS, another behemoth. We can see the Swift Institute, and we can see some of the, you know, people in their arsenal. Um, I believe a lot of people have shared this. I've shared this in previous videos. Digital asset investors probably done more than one in this as well. Um, and we are simply trying to share this information. Again, Marcus Treacher and Ryan Zagone of Ripple. We have you know folks from BNY Mellon. We have folks from Swift, Bank of England. We know how close Mark Carney is and is a supporter of a Ripple technology specifically. We have you know CLS again. So they're all right here, right in front of us. Right, whether offered by Swift or by third parties. So it's my belief, I don't think Swift wants to work with Ripple per se, but they will be using XRP in the XRP ecosystem. This is just my thought. You can let me know if you guys disagree, but please tell me why or why not, um, and try to avoid name calling and condescending talks, because I'll be more open-minded to read it. But um, again, guys, using cloud API tech, enhancing the payment process, talking about Swift GPI and the establishment, as we can see here, they talk about Swift believing blockchain and DLT has significant potential, but still has, you know, ways to go. And they're continuously doing research and development on this. Um, and then also how DLT can enrich the features for Swift GPI. Swift, guys, I know they send tons of money, but they just simply do not have the funding that groups like, you know, Ripple can do. I mean, I think Ripple has enough funds to even purchase R3 altogether. I could be wrong, but uh, we will see. I also like the CEO of R3 who cannot talk about Ripple because he does have an NDA, uh, David Rudder. I think he's a cool guy. But all right, number of new features, talking about this, and then going into 2020 and beyond. Next up, it's the strategic priority for Swift to work with technologies like DLT and incorporate them into solutions like GPI. This gentleman from Swift, we're already working on new proof of concepts and will continue our research and development efforts to ensure that Swift customers will be able to leverage their existing Swift infrastructure and connectivity to benefit from blockchain services. And again, when you're using blockchain and you're sending value, you need a crypto asset. In this case, XRP being the bridge asset. All right, we already talked about the pre-funded accounts. It eliminates the need to hold all of these different types of currencies. No more baskets of currencies. You can hold one and it can interoperate with anything in real time. All right, whether that's offered by Swift or by third parties. This is where I think they will work with R3. R3 is kind of like the Wall Street boys and Goldman Sachs boys getting a slice of the pie and keeping power. I don't think it's going to be a completely level playing field. I think the rich are still going to stay rich. And that is just me being a cynic. And I'm looking to make some money along with you guys. All right, Swift launched. We already got that. All right, now just a few documents. Now there is an English translation for this, but you can see kind of the you know hierarchical hierarchical structure here. Um, we see the application layer, we see the platforms, we see the infrastructure, and Ripple actually is the only one that covers all of these. Pay attention to that, okay? We can see you know AWS, we can see cloud services, things of that connection, and the, this is the core to symbol as well with R3 that we were talking about. I'm also bullish on Ethereum, but I don't think anything will beat the ROI of XRP when all is said and done, right? We got R3, and then of course SIA. And another project that we've been talking about that's been doing really well lately is QNT, Quant. All right, next, you can see, you know, apps, you can see payments, collections, treasury, other app, we can see Ripple here with the network driver layer, Ripple driver, we've talked about, you know, SEPA, SEPA, S-E-P-A, 
just talking about everything connected. And of course, TAS, the logo is, you know, the owl. This gateway, they've already talked about the benefits, doing a side-by-side analysis of a Ripple and TAS or TAS group. Um, it's, you know, the writing is on the wall, guys. And if you want to look up a previous video I've done, just type in like Kevin Cage, um, TAS group or and Ripple or something like that, and you should be able to find it. All right. And then just talking about this again, basically just saying the DLT proof of concepts for real time reconciliation. You know, they're building, they're testing, they're designing, they're going live. Reconciliation is not settlement, but it's cool to see that they're working on this. They're working on improving cross border payments. They're working on the messaging. But the most important thing to relieve all of the friction in the space is settlement. You can work on interoperability and standard messaging. That's awesome. But remember, they want to free the dormant capital. Okay. And then this is actually the previous CEO of Swift. His name is Gottfried Lebrant, and he's on stage right here back in the day with Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple. I know you guys have seen this cl um, clip before, and then, you know, jokingly after Brad Garlinghouse says, hey, we're hiring, you know, just in a funny way, because I believe they're friends, and uh, Gottfried was retiring as well. So basically, uh, he's just talking about being open with Swift, being conservative as, you know, kind of a typical banker, I would say. But just listen up. It's a 28-second clip can initiate a payment on the trade platform and then it goes into uh, into GPI. Um, so we are we're exploring interconnectivity with a lot of things and and banks have always been about that uh, that interconnectivity. Uh, right now and I think banks are only in it uh, yeah, interconnectivity, but also to make money and also keep their own privacy. And that's why that cool update with the XRP ledger and actually kind of hiding, you know, destination tags and that, you know, is quite significant, guys. I think that will absolutely play a role in the future. You can't, I mean, to some extent, you can already do that. Eh? If Santander is on Swift as well, so they can. Oh, Santander. We also know that they're a big investor in Ripple. Do you see how they're all connected? And act as the, the peering point between the, between the two, uh, two new networks. So the last thing we want to be is a closed system. I think the world belongs to open systems. Uh Almost like the narrative, an open system using an open source protocol and creating a level playing field. Going forward, going to initiate. Boom, look at that. Guys, I, I honestly just encourage all of you to continue your own research. Not everything I say is always you know 100% spot on, but I'm trying to put and connect the dots and share what I would already be doing for all of you because I literally, I mean, I just have zero doubt with XRP. It is you know not if, and it's not necessarily when, it's just how high are we going to see this. So again, guys, we will see the you know economies in turmoil. We know that the Fed is printing trillions, I mean, on a weekly basis. We know that the numbers are artificial. Eventually, even with precious metals, when all of these derivative notes are removed, when there's a lot of regulation that come, there's going to be true price discovery. And this could be quite high. I know a lot of people, Jim Rickards, DAI, a lot of people are talking about price sets, not only for XRP, but also for gold and precious metals to stabilize the economy. It's not to make people rich. It's simply, you know, for it to create stability and bring the price of other assets higher as well. Remember, when there's a higher price, for example, XRP, there's also you can send higher value. Therefore, it is more liquid. You can get more liquidity out of the asset. Now, liquidity is a catch all term. I try to use it carefully, even though I do use it pretty loosely. There's multiple meanings for it. But guys, I just encourage you to continue this research. It, the best way to hide something such as XRP is the future tool of finance is to put it right out in the open. All right, guys, with that, I appreciate it as always. Hope you have a good weekend. Be sure to hit that like button and I will see you in the next one.